guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard here coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. As always, today we're going to talk about Brandon Ingram, Brandon Ingram's cards, and whether Brandon Ingram's uh, undervalued uh, or overvalued. Again, I'm not here to give investment advice. I'm going to show you exactly the cards that I own of Brandon Ingram, uh, more aptly the cards that I don't own, unfortunately. I've always uh, thought Brandon Ingram's a great player. He's one of my uh, players on my Dynasty Fantasy League team, so I've got a soft spot in my heart for him. Um, but uh, but I kind of want to look today uh, and compare Brandon Ingram to some of the other studs from that 2016 class. That's kind of a, a class that's a little bit forgotten. Uh, but you're talking about Ingram, uh, Jamal Murray, Dejounte Murray now has you know really stepped into the spotlight. Ben Simmons, who's kind of lurking in the shadows, that sleeping giant's ready to pounce and uh, with the Nets, and then also Jalen Brown, who's uh, who, you know has proven himself to be a super elite player in the NBA. Um, so first, I'm going to switch you over here, and, and, and again, this is uh, I don't have a lot of. Uh, I don't have a, a script to put together, but just, uh, you know, I started digging when I saw the price of a Brandon Ingram Silver Prism card. I said, this doesn't seem right. It seems a little, a little low. And by the way, uh, I tried to get a fade, but, you know, as you can see on this side, actually, I'm sorry, I got my camera backwards. It was kind of a swing in the mist by the barber, but this is a, as fresh as it gets. So I just got cut 30 minutes ago. So. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's take a look at Brandon Ingram's stats here. So I've got Basketball Reference pulled up, which is kind of the, the site that I like to use to to look at players' stats. And I'm gonna let me make this a little. Bit, there we go, a little bit bigger here. Um, actually, let's pull that down because I want to talk about his uh, Brandon Ingram's accomplishments first. So you know, up here, Basketball Reference gives you he's made one All Star team. He's uh, he's 24 years old right now. He's uh, made the 2016 All Rookie Team, and he was the 2019 Most Improved Player in the the NBA. Uh, but I want to focus here uh, because Brandon Ingram is having a good year. Uh, let's let's look at his points per game. They are up significantly. Uh, four points over his career uh, averages. His rebounds are 5.7. That's higher than his career averages. His assists are 5.5. That's markedly higher than his career averages. And his field goal percentage is higher than his career average. Now his three-point shooting has been down a little bit. And I think that's because as he uh, kind of moves into his prime he's being asked to do a little bit more and take a few more shots and there's a little bit more attention on him now that he is an all-star and a and a bona fide kid that's kind of I say kid 20 bona fide 24 year old that is on that precipice of superstardom and greatness in my opinion uh, he's shown flashes of Durant like uh, ability uh, with his length and his size uh, he does need to bulk up a little bit more I think that's kind of part of the difference between him and Durant Durant's got a couple inches on him I must admit he's probably Durant Durant's probably 6'10", 6'11". I'm not sure what they list him at, but I don't think Durant's – What I think they list him at like 6'9". He's not. Uh, but uh, he, he's got a couple inches on him. But more importantly, I think Durant's probably pushing 225, 230, 235 pounds, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, Ingram's probably around the 195 mark. So, uh, you know, their frame is – is similar, but you know Brandon Ingram is kind of a poor man's frame of Kevin Durant. Uh, but his PER, as you can see on your screen, is 19. That's significantly better than his career averages. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what Brandon Ingram is doing this year. The problem is he's doing it in New Orleans, right? And so New Orleans has all this attention when Zion plays, but when Zion doesn't play, they get no attention. Uh, so so Ingram has had to deal with Zion in, Zion out, Zion hurt, Zion healthy, Zion being the alpha, Zion being the beta. You know, Ingram never really has gotten to uh, to settle in and figure out what his, you know, true uh, fit with this Pelicans team is. Um, right now, it's it's just a miracle that they're uh, even in the play-in picture with, uh, you know, with without having Zion for one single game this entire season. I mean, it's been a circus as a Pelicans fan, as somebody who would like to go buy some tickets and go down there and check out some games. Um, you know, it's really disappointing the Zion situation. Again, I'm not sure what the deal is there. I mean, obviously Zion's hurt. I'm sure he wants to play basketball. Um, I hope they get it squared away and he uh, ends up being a long time uh, piece of the Pelicans team. But anyway, 
So I wanted to show you that Brandon Ingram was having a good year, first and foremost. And then I wanted to pull up Card Ladder, and we're going to take a look at the Brandon Ingram Index, right? So they have 20 cards in the Brandon Ingram Index. Not as many as I would like. I'd like it to be more closer to 100, so we have a larger sample size. But they've got 20 in here. If we look at those 20 cards, his uh, index is down 42% over the past three months, as you can see on the screen. That's a pretty significant drop in a 90-day period for somebody who's putting up numbers, doing his job, and has become the alpha on the team and bringing them to the playoffs. Um, you know, bringing in CJ obviously uh, really helps. You know, that's going to help the Pelicans get better, uh, especially since they didn't have to give up too much uh, to get CJ McCollum. I, can't, I just, I'm trying to envision their starting lineup. Uh, you know, if they had a healthy CJ, a healthy Ingram, a healthy JV, Valanchunas, and, um, and a healthy Zion. Um, so, Anyway, uh, that's his index. It's down 42% over the last three months. If we look at it over the last year, it's down 67%. If we look at it over the last month, it's down 37%, and, it, and it's completely unfounded. Um, you know, it's even down a little bit over the last two weeks. So I'm not sure what uh, what Brandon Ingram is doing wrong uh, for his index to be nosediving like this. Let's compare his. Uh, Prism Silver PSA 10 to the other players in the 2016 class. So I've got these sorted by uh, last sold. It's the players that we mentioned. It's Ben Simmons, it's Jamal Murray, it's DeJounte Murray, it's Jalen Brown, and it's Brandon Ingram. And I'll be honest with you, um, I, I got to work this morning and I wanted to do a video on has the hobby forgotten Jamal Murray? Uh, because I thought Jamal Murray cards were down a little bit too much. But when I looked at it, I was like, mm, he's not really down as much as you would suspect for somebody who's been out this long with an ACL injury. And that, that's when I pulled up all the players from the 2016 class. And this right here just jumped out at me. Uh, Brandon Ingram's Silver Prism PSA 10 is a $294 card. Um, it's a pop 185. Uh, you know, back in 2016, silvers were one twentieth of the population, uh, probably of what they are for 2020 and 2019. Uh, so silver really meant something in this 2016. Uh, you know, and I've talked about this on my videos. Silver production has seems like doubled every year since its inception back in 2012, when they were extremely scarce and short printed. Uh, but but Brandon Ingram's Silver Prism is you know selling recently for $294 is absolutely, I think that's silly to me. Um, you know, uh, in what, what we're going to do is we look at these other players, you know, that's that's three three Brandon Ingrams for the price of one Ben Simmons. It's not like Ben Simmons is, uh, you know, and again, every person on this list is going to be super relevant in the NBA for a long time. There's no misses on this list, right? All five of these guys have proven they are either alphas or betas, uh, you know, the best or second best player on their NBA team and, and maybe capable of absolute superstardom. Who knows who emerges? All these guys are still super young. Um, Brandon Ingram, I think, is the youngest out of all the guys on this list. He's only 24 still. Uh, that's a, something that people forget is when he was first a Laker and he weighed about 110 pounds soaking wet. Uh, uh, he, he was at like 18, 19 years old. He's 24 years old, and he's in his sixth year in the league. Uh, so he's not even remotely near his prime. And these other guys are young as well, but Ingram's only 24. Some of these guys are 25, 26, if I, if I recall. Uh, Jamal Murray also, I think, is pretty young. Um, but uh, but Ben Simmons is 3X, uh, the, the Brandon Ingram PSA 10, Prism Silver. Jamal Murray is more than double. Right, Jamal Murray's got question. Ben Simmons got question marks. Is he going to shoot the ball? Is he going to come back and be the savior in Brooklyn? Is he going to be the goat again? And and uh, you know, if, if the Nets lose, are they going to blame it on Ben Simmons? You know, there's issues with his narrative. There's issues with just his likability from the hobby. Is the hobby going to forgive him and embrace him when he comes back? Does the hobby care about people who can't shoot the basketball? Um, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of question marks about Ben Simmons. Um, and, and I'm a huge fan of Ben Simmons as a player and the impact he has on the court, even if he never shoots a basketball. Uh, Jamal Murray, there's questions about his health, right? He tore his ACL. Um, you know, with Jante Murray, there's questions about him playing in San Antonio. Who's the last humongous, uh, you know, alpha, mega, you know, face of the league that played in, uh, in San Antonio? I mean, you could say Tim Duncan. You can say David Robinson. Go look at Tim Duncan's cards historically in comparison to Kobe Bryant. Um, in comparison to to other guys that are on his level, Tim Duncan's a top, probably a top ten player of all time, without argument. He's certainly a top twelve player of all time, and arguably 
not even arguably, but he is the greatest power forward of all time. Um, and his cards, you know, pale in comparison to Kobe Bryant. So so DeJounte Murray's got to overcome that stigma of just being a San Antonio Spur. Um, you know, so there's a question mark there. Um, the, the, the direction of the San Antonio Spurs is also a question mark. I don't, you know, maybe DeJounte gets traded one day. I don't know. Donovan Mitchell's fighting the same thing in Utah. He's doing everything that could ever be asked of a young budding superstar. And he doesn't really get the attention that a Tatum does in Boston, you know, uh, or, or, or guys like that. Um, and then you've got Jalen Brown. Um, Jalen Brown's a great player. You guys know how I feel about Jalen Brown. I have a huge uh, Jalen Brown collection. I invested very heavily in Jalen Brown. I've moved a few, but I've really held on to him because I think one day when he gets away from Tatum, he'll truly explode and blossom. But even Jalen Brown's PSA 10 silver is, you know, 60 pop greater than Brandon Ingram, and it's 150 bucks more. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so just kind of looking at this chart, you know, if you look at just the silver prism PSA 10 card over the last six months, Ingram's Cards down 60%. I just don't get that. DeJounte's up 16%. And again, certainly justified. I'm not saying that, you know, DeJounte Murray is not an absolute freak. Um, but uh, but the, for DeJounte Murray to be up 16% and Brandon Ingram to be down 60% doesn't make sense. And let me tell you why. So I've gone over to basketball reference here and we're going to compare uh, Brandon Ingram and DeJounte Murray. Like I said, Brandon Ingram's younger than DeJounte Murray. Look at how similar these stats are. We're about to go through these stats. And again, they're going to be a little bit different on some of the counting stats at the end. But uh, Ingram's played a few less games because he dealt with, I can't remember, I think it was like a hip injury or something weird like that. But uh, field goals per game, almost identical. Field goal attempts, almost identical. Field goal percentage is identical. Three-pointers, identical. Three-pointers attempted, identical. Three-point percentage, identical. Two-pointers uh, made, identical. Two-pointers attempted, identical. Two-point percentage, identical. Effective field goal percentage, identical. Free throws, both good free throw shooters. Ingram probably a, a little bit better free throw shooter at about 3% higher. Rebounds, that's where DeJounte Murray gets them, right? They play about the same minutes. DeJounte Murray rebounds the ball a little bit better, assists the ball better because he's playing the point guard position and Brandon Ingram is not. When Brandon Ingram did play the point guard position, he was putting up about seven to eight assists a game, like, uh, you know, not like, but it's closer to DeJounte Murray. But that's not Ingram's role with this team. He's not the point guard. Uh, he's gone through phases where they kind of run him as a point forward, but he's not. So he's going to have fewer assists. Obviously, DeJounte Murray steals the hell out of the ball. In an incredible clip, one of the one of the best thieves in the entire NBA. So Ingram's not going to compare to him there. And then blocks, Ingram's got more turnovers. They're identical. Personal fouls, they're identical. And points, Ingram averages more points. So looking at this stat line all the way across. You could give the slight edge to DeJounte Murray because he's a better defender and he's a better rebounder and assist man, but that's a lot of similarity. Certainly, it doesn't uh, you know, warrant the fact that DeJounte Murray's cards are double what Brandon Ingram's are, right? Um, DeJounte Murray's pop is lower than Ingram, but we all know, well, we have to assume that the print run for these cards, and there's no certain condition sensitive nature to any of these cards as far as I know. I don't think the gym rate for one, I probably could have pulled that up on PSA, but I don't, I don't think the gym rate for DeJounte Murray is paltry in comparison to Brandon Ingram. I would assume it's pretty similar gym rate since they were all produced from the same card. I would assume they're all going to ultimately have approximately the same PSA 10 pop because the print run uh, from Panini is presumably the same for all the silver uh, rookie cards from that from that product. But that's, uh, you know, you look at these players, you look at their stat lines. Ingram's younger. Uh, they're both toiling in mediocrity to some extent. They both made one all-star team. They're, you know, I say toiling in mediocrity. They're in small market uh, teams with really, you know, they're fighting for the playing game. They're not contenders. They have no chance to do anything this year but I would I would argue that Brandon Ingram is right on the precipice of uh, of greatness and a, and a tremendous amount of hobby attention and world attention because next year heading into the season if they can figure out a way to plug a point guard in there a true reliable point guard that could be one of the most exciting starting fives in the entire NBA if they can keep all this crap together. Um, you know, you're talking about point guard X, fill in the blank with whoever you want to acquire as a free agent. And then you've got uh, McCollum, you've got Ingram at the three, you've got Zion at the four, and you've got JV at the five. That is a really, really good starting five. Um, and they love uh, Willie Green. Willie Green's done a fantastic job with this team, just all, trying to hold it all together. So uh, my point is, Ingram and DeJounte Murray's stats, 
are not disparate enough to justify a two to one ratio on their silver prism card. It does not make any sense. Um, let's compare him to uh, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's cards are $150 more, right? Or about $145, $150 more. Comparing Ingram to Jalen Brown, who is a bona fide stud. Anybody who doesn't think Jalen Brown is an absolute super freak, fantastic player with a tremendous NBA future is nuts. Uh, he's as can't miss as can't miss gets. They uh, play about the same uh, number of minutes per game. Uh, Jalen Brown's on top here in this uh, graphic that we're looking at, again, on basketballreference.com. They take about the same field goal attempts. They shoot about the same field goal percentage. Jalen takes um, significantly more threes and makes more threes, but their percentage is relatively similar. 33% is down for Ingram, so that, that is a little bit of a point of a concern. I don't know if it's because he's been in and out of the lineup with injuries or maybe just because his role keeps changing with this team. Sometimes he runs the point forward. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he has, you know, Valanciunas. Sometimes he doesn't. He didn't have McCollum. Now he does. I, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out his role. He's never really gotten settled. They've never gotten settled with an actual roster and so hopefully David Griffin can get that crap straight and the Pelicans can really put it together next year and make a run at it. I'd love that as a Louisiana native uh, and, and just somebody who wants to keep that franchise in New Orleans. You know, you're always hearing about the possibility of them leaving. Uh, Jalen Brown is a better effective field goal percentage. Um, <clears throat> Brandon Ingram is a much better free throw shooter than Jalen Brown. They rebound at the same clip approximately 6.1 and 5.7. Uh, Brandon Ingram has significantly better assist numbers. Uh, he has more blocks. He has less steals. They have about the same turnover, same fouls, and about almost exactly the same points per game. So again, I'm not saying Ingram's stats are better, but they're relatively indistinguishable from Jalen Brown. Now, Jalen Brown is a much better perimeter defender uh, than Brandon Ingram is, but let's go down here and let's look at some of their advanced metrics, right? So we go down here to advance. Let's look at, uh, you know, their, their uh, uh, true shooting percentage. Uh, Jalen Brown and Brandon Ingram, relatively similar. Their PER, Brandon Ingram's actually better. Their value over replacement player, identical. Um, so again, if we go back here and we look at their silver PSA 10s, there's more Jalen Brown silver PSA 10s. And again, I, I kind of throw pop out of the mix right now because I think when it all shakes out, all their pops are going to be relatively similar. But there's more right now Jalen Brown PSA 10 silvers than Brandon Ingram. And his card's $150 more. Uh, you know, if you bought three, you can buy three Brandon Ingrams for two Jalen Browns. If you ask me, do I want three Brandon Ingram PSA 10 silvers or two Jalen Brown PSA 10 silvers? I would take the three Ingrams. And so that's just a player comparison between those, uh, you know, DeJounte Murray and Ingram and Jalen Brown and Ingram, just to show you guys, there's not that much disparity. And so, you know, the media is super heavy on any player in Boston, Philly, Chicago, you know, L.A., New York, etc. cetera. Uh, and then, you know, DeJounte Murray is in a similar small market size and his cards are, are you know, you know, he's like, uh, you know, player of the day. I mean, I get it. He's a great player and all that, but his cards are up 18% and Ingram's down almost 60%. So let me show you what I have. Um, yeah, here we go. So th these are the Ingrams I have. So I'm not out here trying to freaking hype my cards. I don't have a ton of money in Ingram. I've got a silver, um, you know, let me, well, here I can pull it up on the slideshow. I've got a silver uh, BGS 9.5, you know, uh, nothing crazy special there. The 10 is worth 294. So what is this? I don't know. I didn't even look. Maybe $175 card, $150 card. I don't know. Um, that just seems really cheap to me. It just seems super cheap. I've got this. Uh, I remember buying this card for $110 off of Facebook. I've got a, you know, it's a gym plus autograph Ingram. It is a sticker auto. So that's his optic hollow autograph. I've got Ingram's. Uh, this is a weird one that I pulled actually pulled from a pack when I used to actually bust wax. So pulled this uh, select prism copper silver. I think it's numbered to 60 or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, uh, number to 25. Sorry. Um, so is that right? Yeah. Number to what is this number two? Hang on, let me look at this thing. Number to 49. Okay, so it's numbered to 49, but that's a, a gym, a quad gym, 9.5 select copper silver, uh, number to 40, uh, number to 40, 49. Uh, I've got this uh, pretty cool. I actually pulled this from a pack too. I don't know why I was opening gold standard, but this is number to 25. It's BGS 9. It's an autograph 10 on the back, and this card is uh, number 7 out of 25. I've got, uh, I do have uh, a bunch of these, so I stacked these. I bought these super cheap and just graded them, uh, and uh, the the tens I kept, the nines I moved. So I've got a nine select base. I mean, a, a, oops, sorry. I've got a, let's see, one, two, three uh, select base. And then I've got, um, I do have a, 
I thought I had a PSA 10 silver. Maybe I don't. I don't have a PSA 10 silver. I've just got that 9.5. But then I've got this uh, just random, super cheap, you know, 2006 Donruss base PSA 10 that I thought was a cool card that I, I think I probably picked that up for pennies on the dollar. And you could probably go pick this same card up right now for pennies on the dollar. So I, I wanted to give you guys, you know, a look to let you know I'm not sitting here trying to hype my card so I can flip them and make a fortune. As you know, I deal primarily in much bigger cards. But I think that there might be a great opportunity to buy into Brandon Ingram. So I'm going to start paying um, I'm going to start paying a little bit more attention to Brandon Ingram. I think in comparison to the other guys in the 2016 draft class, I just think he's a little bit undervalued. Um, and, and I know I hate to use that word. Maybe the other guys are overvalued. I don't know. That's that balancing act you're always playing. Is, is DeJounte Murray cards just way too much? Is he just overvalued? Should all of them be valued about where Ingram is? Or is Ingram not getting the love that he deserves from the hobby and the, and the market value that his cards deserve? I don't really know. Uh, but uh, but I wanted to just show you that disparity, which I, I just think it's illogical. And whenever I see, you know, in a logical arbitrage in the hobby, I just like to point it out and share it with you guys so you guys can take a closer look. Uh, obviously, I could talk about about this these five players and their cards and specific cards I could literally talk for 10 hours on a video and look at all the different cards the RPAs the silvers the prism select optic whatever and we can go through all that uh, but you know so I'm not sitting here telling you which card to buy I only use that silver PSA 10 because it's got a decent pop rate but not so much like the uh, like the base prism um, but um, but anyway, that's just what, something I wanted to share with you guys today. I'm probably going to take a close look at jumping uh, into some Ingram cards because I think, you know, and maybe the right time will be in the offseason. I'm not sure. Maybe they'll dip after they get bounced from the play-in or the playoffs or whatever. And maybe his cards will dip a little bit early summer. But I have a feeling leading into next season, that Pelicans team is going to get talked about an awful lot if Zion Williamson is either healthy or or if you know some of these rumors are true and they move Zion and they pick up a point guard and then another piece, uh, and they've got a hellacious quantity of draft picks as well, I think the Pelicans are a team to keep a very close eye on because they've stockpiled some assets and they might have a chance to put something pretty special together if they can get all that talent on the same page. And I think Ingram would be a major, major part of it because at the end of the game, you know, there's two guys that can get the ball right now. It's McCollum and it's Ingram. And uh, Ingram's already made an all-star team. And like we said, he's 24 years old. So he's got at least 12 to, I'd say 12 to 15 years left on his career. Um, that's a lot of meat left on the bone for Ingram to be really good. And remember, one thing that I always like to talk about when you're prospecting players, they're not going to be in these cities forever. They're not going to be on these teams forever. We talk about that all the time. I talk about it with De'Aaron Fox. He's not going to be in Sacramento forever. Donovan Mitchell will not be in Utah forever. It doesn't work that way like it used to when Dirk and the mailman and Tim Duncan and Kobe and those guys played. Those days are over. These guys will not sit and dwell in the cellar in San Antonio and in New Orleans for the rest of their careers if they're not winning games. They just won't do it. They'll go get that paycheck and they'll go find that contender and they'll sign a max deal somewhere else in Miami or Chicago or Boston or Philly or LA or New York. Um, so, uh, you know, I can't stress enough. The one piece of advice, I try not to give it too much advice because I I don't know everything, but the one thing I have learned is, you know, when a player is in a crappy, I shouldn't say that, but when a player is in a uh, under the radar city or an uh, historically uh, awful organization, that doesn't last forever. So maybe the time to snag that player is, you know, while they're in that organization, because if De'Aaron Fox goes to the Lakers, uh, you know, if uh, Brandon Ingram ends up, you know, in Chicago or fill in the blank, whatever, Philadelphia, I don't know, I'm just picking Miami, who knows, um, there's going to be a huge spike. And so uh, maybe maybe it's the time to buy a DeJounte Murray or Brandon Ingram. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, ben, ben Simmons card spiked a little bit just from a trade and he went from a big market to a big market. So anything can happen. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys think about my take on Brandon Ingram and specifically this 2016 draft class and their prism. PSA 10 silver cards in comparison with one another. Uh, maybe that's not the best buy, but I think if I could get, you know, three and a half Brandon Ingrams for one Ben Simmons, give me that deal all day long. If I can get, you know, two Brandon Ingrams for every one and, uh, you know, one Jamal Murray, give me the deal. That's the deal I'm taking. Uh, I think all of these guys have question marks, but all of them have shown that they're not swings and misses. These guys are all going to be around for a really long time and be super relevant in this league. Uh, I'm just not sure after 10 years when we look back, which of these guys will be the best out of these five. I think Ingram has every chance to be the best out of the five. Uh, and at that price point, that would be my choice. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Keep collecting.
Stay positive in the hobby. I hope you like the haircut and peace.